All right, guys, what's up? We're gonna do another one of my tests on the small bastardized water heater. This time without the GFI circuit <laughs> to trip before the test complete. So, looks like I've had this running uh, just fan only and the pump only for a few minutes. My air is 82 degrees. Yes, it's over 80 degrees out here in Glendale, Arizona. Pressures are equalized at 222, and the water is at 76 degrees right there. So, I'm going to put this to cool mode and kick it way down. I just want to give it a full run and see how long it takes to heat up to 130, if it'll heat up to 130. So, the time now is 4:59. So, basically, 5 p.m. It's a little scary how the suction dipped way down there. Hopefully there wasn't a leak on this sucker. Come back up, you sucker. This is R410. It's coming up. 260 something. Not gonna get an accurate subcooling. The temperature probes are on the water, not on the refrigerant. This is liquid line, feels pretty close to ambient. But you know what? Being that I know that it's like 82 out here and the liquid line's gonna be a few degrees warmer, I can see the high side is starting to uh, approach normal there. It's at 10 over ambient right now, it should keep going up. Suction's up to 82 is a capillary tube metering device though so it's um well you know i got almost a 20 degree split already so i'm not going to worry about the uh pressures just now i did pull out refrigerant last time just to where the superheat started to jack up and then put just a couple ounces back in until the superheat you know kind of sh showed me that i had a fully flooded evaporator and that's where i was going to leave it for a minimum refrigerant charge so got 62 degrees this thing was able to perform more than a 20 degree split before so maybe this thing did just uh, lose a piss amount of refrigerant but I don't know suction's come up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing run it's 501 come back out here and check on this in a few minutes looks like a yeah so oh and also the other thing, we're, we're two minutes into the run now, and it's 80 degree water and 92, 93 degrees uh, leaving water temperature. So it already raised the water six degrees, almost seven, within two minutes. The suction pressure is now 101, which is bringing the evaporator point to just above freezing. Discharge 333. So, okay. Maybe the charge is still okay. 60 degrees, 60, yeah, about 60 degree uh, supply air temp. With it being 82 out here, so it's kind of getting in there. Just it just started out a little weird. So we'll go ahead and let it run. Check back in a few minutes. Okay, guys, this is gonna be take two. Since I didn't get accurate readings, it's 534. I'm waiting for that to turn to 535, and I will start the compressor. The water is at 74 again, because I just filled it. See, so it's 74, 75, leaving. I got a tad bit of heat stuff in there. I have the probe right here, so the water's shooting right on it. The leaving water temperature. And then this is the entering water temperature right there. 535, let's turn it on. Just went from 1.2. 1.3 amps for the blower only. That's what we got, blower and compressor to start with. So I'm gonna let it run a few minutes again. Let the pressure start building. And I'll just take a reading every couple minutes. Uh, 536, one minute into it. The water is already 76, 77 in the bucket, at least coming into the unit there. And it is leaving at 96, 111. Suction 339, 340 discharge, 54 degrees spire and dropping. 
Remember, it's 82 or 83 degrees out right now. Five thirty-nine. Four minutes into it. One sixteen. Such and three seventy-seven discharge. Eighty-five degree water entering. One hundred six water leaving. So it's twenty degree. And supply air is about fifty-three, fifty-four degrees. One cool air out. At that point, we are eight point two amps. So that means the compressor is pulling seven. Discharge. One hundred and seventy degrees. 544, so that'd be nine minutes into it. 127 section 470 discharge. Water's up to 106. Water leaving 127. Got 56 degree supply air. We have 9.4 total amps. That would be 1.2 under that. So it'd be 8.2 compressor amps. 185 degree discharge temperature. We are at 5.49, so that means it's been 14 minutes, we're probably about at 130 because this probe here is measuring the water coming in and I think it's slow, reading through the copper, water leaving 143, so we're up to 550 on the discharge, suction going up along with it, 57 out the supply, so we've lost a couple degrees of cooling performance, at this point, We've got 10.5 total amps, so it's 9.3 compressor. Still under 200 degrees on the discharge, right on the top of that compressor. So that's good. We don't want it to go over 225. Don't want to cook oil in there. So I think this is reading a little delayed here. I don't have. A, I wish I had a probe to drop down in there or to stick in this line right here to get the actual um, better temperature reading. So outside the copper we're just getting a little bit of lag it seems. So 570 we're getting up there and so I'm just go ahead and turn off the compressor. We'll call it 550. So that's 15 minutes. And, uh, I'm gonna let this just sit a few seconds to kind of uh, let the temperatures catch up kind of see what the actual water temperature in the bucket is. Okay. Been letting it just circulate for a few minutes. And it is, the line here is approaching 130. And I bet you the water is 130 just with the loss on the copper. The one that's down in there has leveled out to about 130.8. So we did heat the uh, five gallons of water up to 130 degrees within that 15 minutes on this little... 115 volt rotary compressor, not too bad there. Got the, I forgot what the pressure was. It was up over 550, but it was under 600. <laughs> so um, it is still running through the stock pressure switch and controller there at this point. So it never did trip, even when I had it over 600 on the first run, where I actually heated the water a lot more than I realized due to the lag of where I had my probes. So. That's going to do it, I guess, for this video. Um, just a nice, quick little full test on it. So, we'll see how it go, what I come up with next. And anyway, just to keep up with the project, don't forget to like and subscribe.